Today, let's make the ultimate. Uh, let's make the ultimate icon component. We want this to be as reusable and flexible as possible. Let's do it. <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do it. <sighs> Shoot. Let's jump in. Since this is a React component, it only makes sense to start with create React app. So here in VS Code, in our terminal, I'm going to type npx create react app ultimate icon. And this will take a minute. While we wait, let's look at some internet cats. Okay, now let's do CD ultimate icon. So we're inside our folder that we just created and you'll see up here we can run yarn start to start our React application. Our browser automatically refreshes and we see the spinning React logo. Perfect. So I'm gonna close our terminal and I'm going to open this ultimate icon folder and here you'll see all the items that create React created. So in our source file, I'm going to open up our app.js and we can clean out some of these items. I'm going to remove all the content and eventually our icon will be in the same location as the React spinning logo. Give that a save and then in app.css, we can clean up this file too. I'm going to remove all the stuff related to our animation. We can get rid of these styles as well. So give that a save and our logo is not spinning anymore, which is perfect. Okay, now let's create a folder inside source called components. And I'm going to create another subdirectory called icon. And everything related to our icon is going to be within that icon subdirectory. So I'm gonna create a new file called index.js. And in, inside index.js, I'm going to type RAFC. And I have an extension within VS Code that will stub out a functional React component. I'll include a link in the description below. Hit return, and it expands out. So here, we want to change index to icon, and I want to make sure that this is a named export. Within our component, I'm just going to type the word icon so that we know that it's working. Inside app.js, I'm going to import our new icon. We can get rid of our SVG now, and I can reference our new component. So if I give that a save, you should see our text icon here within the browser. Perfect. Great, now let's add a few icons. Within our subfolder, icon, we're going to add facebook.js and I'm going to add one for Twitter and Instagram. As you might have guessed, we're going to use SVGs because that will allow us to control the color and the size within our code. I'm going to jump over to Figma and select one of these icons. And the trick here is that each icon has the same size bounding box. You'll see this is 25 by 25. I can select each icon and then come down to the export section on the right, click the plus button, change this to SVG and click export. And I'll save that to my desktop. I'm going to do the same thing for Facebook. Select SVG and export to my desktop, and then the same for Instagram. Select SVG and export. I'm gonna jump back over to VS Code, and here I have Instagram.js already open, so I'm gonna type RAFC again, and we want this to be a named export. And I'm going to open up our SVG code directly within VS Code, and you'll see it looks like a lot of gobbledygook. It's totally fine. I'm going to copy and paste this inside of our return statement. I'm going to give this a save, and you'll notice that VS Code automatically reformatted everything. That's because I have an extension within VS Code called Prettier that will reformat my code for me. Okay, there's a few things within our component that we want to be dynamic, our width, height, and class name. So these will be props that we will pass in. So I'm going to say width, 
height and class name. And I want these to be in alphabetical order. So we'll say width, height, and we'll add one for a class name. Give that a save. Okay, the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna remove any references to fill. Uh, we want to be able to control the color through our CSS and that attribute will serve as an inline style that will have precedence over anything that we write in CSS. So we want to get rid of it so that we can control it in CSS. Now let's do the exact same thing for our Twitter icon and type RAFC, make this a name to export. We're going to do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, this is a video. We're gonna do the same thing with twitter.js. I'm gonna type RAFC, enter, and I'm going to make this a named export. So I'm gonna say export Twitter. And I'm going to open up our twitter.svg directly within VS Code. Copy and paste it here. I'm gonna give this a save and it'll reformat. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. We wanna make sure that our width and height are props that we're passing in. And I'm going to do the same for class name. And then we wanna say class name, uh, height, and width. And then we want to get rid of these fill attributes. Give that a save and then we'll do the same for Facebook. So let's grab our Facebook SVG, copy and paste, type RAFC, paste that here, and then we wanna make sure this is a named export. Give this a save and it reformats. We'll change this to width and height props, class name equals class name, and then we will pass these items in up here. Give that a save. Um, let's remove our attributes. Give that a save. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna jump back over to index.js and this is where all the magic happens. This is where we start to tie all the pieces together. At the top, we want to import all the icons that we just created. So I'm gonna say import Facebook from Facebook. I'm gonna duplicate this and do the same for Instagram and Twitter. Perfect. Within the component, we want to be able to pass it the name of the icon that we want, and it will automatically return the correct SVG that we're looking for. So the first thing we want to do is accept props. If we were to write an if else conditional, this is what it would look like. If props.name to lowercase equals Facebook. Now what this says is that when you pass in name as a prop, it's gonna convert it to lowercase. So whether you use uppercase or lowercase Facebook, it will work no matter what. And it will return the Facebook component that we created. We want to pass off all the props that were passed in. This dot, dot, dot props is called a spread. So anything that we pass in here, props, it automatically hands it off to our component Facebook here. We don't have to explicitly define our height, our width, and our class name. It just takes everything it receives and hands it off. Okay, I'm gonna do an else if to handle Twitter and Instagram. So in this case, I'm going to copy our if statement and make else, and hit paste. Now I wanna change this to Twitter and we're going to show, we're gonna return Twitter component that we created. And then let's do the same for Instagram. Turn Instagram props. If none of these cases match, I wanna use an else to return an empty div. When I hit save, you may have noticed that I now have an error within the browser. This is pretty easy to fix. If we come back over to app.js, it just wants a name here. So I'm going to say Facebook, and when I give that a save, you'll actually see our Facebook icon appear. So pretty cool. It's working. But I did want to return to our index.js. Anytime that you see yourself starting to type the same thing or you have reoccurring blocks of code, that's a code smell. <laughs> opportunity to refactor. In this case, we're repeating props.name. to lowercase quite frequently. And JavaScript actually has a thing called switch, which will handle this beautifully. So we can refactor this and say switch. And what this does is it says each time I want you to look at this 
props.name.to lowercase. And if it is Facebook, then we want to return our component. If it's Twitter, we want to return the Twitter component. If it's Instagram, we want to return the Instagram component and then by default, so if none of these exist, we will return our empty div. So it's a little bit easier to look at and a little bit easier to read and digest. Okay, the only thing left is we wanna be able to control the width and height and color within CSS. Okay, if we come back over to our app.js, we can pass in a width and height prop. So I'm gonna pass in 15 just to show you it can be super small. this 300. It's a nice size. And just to show that this is working, I can also pass in Instagram and Twitter. And there's all of our icons. Okay, I'm going to remove these, give that a save, and I'm going to jump over to our app.css. And when you're trying to control the color of an SVG, you use fill, not color. So I'm going to say fill, and I can make that white. And you'll notice our icon is now white. Awesome. Before we go, I do want to show you one more trick that I like to use when I'm working with SVGs. If we add some text inside our app.jx, and you'll see that it's white. If I come back to our app.css, it's white because we have this color here. I'm going to change this to cyan and give this a save. You'll notice that it's now blue. Perfect. But if we want our SVG to adopt whatever color the parent has, instead of trying to change this each time, to cyan, we can also say current color, and it will inherit the current color of the parent. So now it's cyan. We could also say magenta, and it will be magenta. Pretty cool. <laughs> We're done. We made it through the recording. <laughs> If you like this video, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you want to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Hey! Ah, this stuff just comes out when I'm recording. <laughs>